Hello there. So, as you could probably tell from the title, I am talking during this video. Speaking of which, sorry if I sound tired or nervous, I'm still trying to get over the whole talking in public thing. Not that this is public, I'm just talking to a microphone in my room. But, I don't know, it just feels like a good way to get over my whole public speaking fear. That, and I got the COVID vaccine a couple of days ago, and I'm still really tired from that. Not that this is what you want to hear, but still. Let's just say that I have three brain cells on duty right now, and the third one is about to go on break, so I'm sorry if that comes off in my talking. Anyway, I'll get to actually talking about the video now. So, I have drawn Akasha. When I did draw her, I changed her design a little bit. I didn't have a real reason for it, aside from I had other drawings I wanted to do, and it would take me forever to do the hooves the way they were originally designed. The other reason was I just really wanted to see her with solar flares coming out of her wings. I thought that was a really cool thing I could add. So when the infinite Eclipse series first became a thing, I decided I wanted to draw the Molten and the Crystallize preparing for war and then them actually going to war. And I wanted to do this in their original designs. Sure, I draw it in my own style, I'm not going to copy someone else's style or trace or anything, but I wanted to do it exactly how they were initially designed, so no changes to their design on my part. That being said, I have more time to work on this. I'm not rushing myself on this particular drawing, so I do have the time to actually get their designs right and not improvise and try to cover the stuff that would take me too long to figure out myself. However, I've come across a little bit of a roadblock, and that is the fact that the standard Molten Soldiers have not been given a formal design yet. I'm not sure if they will be or not. Either way, I can't continue until they have an official design, or if they are confirmed to never have an official design. The reason being is I do not want to change anything design-wise in the three drawings for the Infinite Eclipse series. So if I were to draw the Molten, in my own way since there is no official design yet and another one is released later, it's going to pretty much defeat the purpose of what I was trying to do in the first place. This will probably turn into a three-part series. Obviously I did the line art and the placers for the Molten Soldiers, but I'm also going to have to make the second part purely background because I have a very, very specific background in mind and it's very detailed. And then the third part is very likely just drawing Akasha, Aiza, and then the Molten. So unfortunately it's going to take a while, but on the bright side, I have a lot more time to work on it. So it'll come out much better than the initial Akasha drawing I made. To be honest, I didn't like it that much. I uploaded it anyway, because it was made. Not my proudest work. I. I rushed it way too much. So, the entire reason I chose to uh, talk at all in this video is because of the fact that one of my friends in real life wanted to know a little bit more about my drawing process, so I figured this would be a very good place and a very good time to do it. I know a lot of artists will heavily focus on their line art. I'm not one of those people. I generally don't go into that much detail with line art. Usually for me and line art, what I like to do is I basically just use it to essentially show me where the color placement is going to be and it, the color will make the quality, basically. There is an exception to this and it's wings. I forgot how to wing in this drawing quite a bit. You will definitely see that when I do Akasha's wings, but wings I tend to be way more detailed on in line art than anything else. The reason why is because of the fact that 
wing detail is crucial for the color placement. It just helps me see the detail that I need to do on the wings in color, as opposed to where I can figure it out on things like hair or eyes or anything else really. Wings are a bit harder. That is why I do more detail on wings than I do in most other details. And that's part of the reason why you see me fixing broken lines on wings but not anywhere else in my line art. It's because it doesn't need to be fixed anywhere else. I don't care too much about broken lines because all they're there to do is show me where color is supposed to go and what color that's supposed to be and it, it still serves its purpose even if it's a broken line. So unless the line art is the final version of what I'm drawing, I usually will not fix broken lines. I'll leave it very sloppy. I can, I can do that. It's not something I'm terribly concerned about because the line art isn't going to be the final. It's not what is going to be the visual representation of what you're doing. It's just a placement holder. I know I'm talking a lot, but not saying much in terms of my drawing process. That's because there isn't really much process to the line art, which is why I'm going to end talking about it here. It's just because I can give more insight into the drawing process when I actually move to color as opposed to here. So now I guess it just makes sense to talk about the Infinite Eclipse series as a whole and why exactly I like it so much and why I'm drawing it. The thing is, is that the concept isn't a new one. I've seen the concept of a more powerful version of Nightmare Moon and Daybreaker before, some even to the extent that JYC Rowe has done in the Infinite Eclipse series, but I think his approach to it is much better than I've seen in most of the other executions of the concept. A major difference in execution being the fact that Akasha and Nero aren't Nightmare Moon and Daybreaker. They aren't of the same consciousness, if that makes sense. They're entirely separate, they have their own goals, they have their own... I don't want to say dreams, but they have their own... They have their own ambitions, they have their own personalities in a way, while they still keep the rivalry that Daybreaker and Nightmare Moon had, and I really like that. That, and I really enjoy how, how the execution is in terms of format, because a lot of what I've seen is either drawing or writing, but I've never seen this concept executed in almost exclusively music, which I really like. Of course, I know about the Google Docs thing. I've read it. But the fact that it's mostly executed through music and not simply reading is... I guess it just fascinates me because it's new. Well, newer. But the fact that the story of the Infinite Eclipse and their armies and everything is entirely in song is, I guess it's just appealing to me. That being said, there could be writing of a story similar that I would like as well. I don't really read fanfictions anymore for MLP. I mainly just listen to some of the fandom songs these days. I've just kind of left the fandom at this point. It's not a bad fandom or a bad storyline, it's just I'm not... I don't find it as interesting as I used to. I still like drawing some of them for practice or for fun, but I'm not invested in their stories anymore. Until I came to the Infinite Eclipse series, I actually am invested in that. You could probably tell by my drawing of the Infinite Eclipse series. And that's part of the reason why I've been drawing Celestia and Luna as well for practice, is really just the Infinite Eclipse series that's keeping me going on the fandom. But the fact that someone took a kid's show 
and turned it into something pretty epic is quite amazing to me. It just is. Because you wouldn't expect something like this to be interesting, but it is to me. And that's a pretty big reason why the last two My Little Pony drawings I'm going to do for a while are Infinite Eclipse themed. Oh, and because of the fact that I made a new OC, I'm going to draw her both as a Molten and a Crystallized. She's not a pony, but I'd still like to do that anyway, just for, just for fun. She's a three-tailed kitsune. I've drawn her before and uploaded one drawing to the channel. I actually don't like the drawing that I uploaded that much. It was meant to be a simplistic oil painting. Didn't come out well, it came out too simplistic. I just didn't like how it came out, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, because she's new and she's my new main, she's going to be my channel representation, I'm going to draw her a lot more often. I also have a real life friend who has a YouTube as well. His name is Envelion on YouTube. I'm drawing his channel character after I design it, finish designing it. He wanted me to design that and draw it for him for his profile picture. Once I do that, I'm going to draw stuff for other series. Mainly the Dishonored series, I've been really, really into Dishonored lately. I just got Death of the Outsider, I've been playing that almost non-stop recently. Love it so much. It's an older series, but it took me forever to find the third game, so once I found a copy of that, I was all over it. Once I draw some of that, I'm gonna draw stuff for the Elder Scrolls, stuff like that. Bound by Flame, Fable, games like those. I'm also gonna be drawing stuff for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I love the Mystery Dungeon spinoff more than the original games when it comes to Pokemon, especially the older ones. I was really upset they got rid of Skitty as a playable character. I'm not sure if there's going to be another Mystery Dungeon game after the remake Rescue Team DX. If there is, I really hope Skitty stays, because my main teams for all of the Mystery Dungeon games has been me as a Skitty and a Charmander as a partner, and I want to keep that trend going for as long as I possibly can. It's the same team in every game for me. In any case, the drawing has been done for over a minute now, so I'm gonna stop talking. So thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with my talking, and my rambling, and whatever. And thank you for liking the video if you liked the drawing. And again, thanks. Bye.